What's up guys, welcome to today's video. So on the video today, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys how to cut this really fun haircut. It's got a really nice fringe to it. I'm gonna show you guys that technique. Plus I'm gonna show you guys how to create uh, all this texture and the movement around the face. And the second thing that I wanna talk to you guys about is our brand new tool. This is the Tri Razor by Free Salon Education. I don't know if you guys have picked one up. If you have, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for doing that. We're shipping them worldwide. <laughs> It's $44.95, not a lot of money, uh, but it's a super fun tool to create these textured looks. So today I'm gonna show you guys how to cut this haircut using the tri razor and also doing it on dry hair, which seems crazy. I know a lot of you guys are like, whoa, uh, razor on dry hair seems crazy. <laughs> it's not, uh, there's a lot of prep work that goes into it. So I'm gonna break that down for you guys. I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. These razor blades inside the tri razor are super sharp uh, and you can change them out. You can always have a fresh blade going on. So with all that being said, I want to get started with the video today. I'm going to walk you guys through this step by step. Get involved in the comments, post what you think. If you have any questions, let me know. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, like it, hit that notification bell so you get a notification every time I post because we're posting all of the time. Let's go. All right, so to start off this haircut, what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the fringe area. So the best way to do this is to really look for the hairline right at that temple uh, and kind of work your way up. Now, if they have finer hair and you want a heavier fringe, obviously you're gonna go a little bit further back, but you gotta understand that the further back you go on fine hair, the more you take away from the side. So you gotta find the balance. So what I do is I go straight up and then I do the same thing on the opposite side. So you can see that hairline kind of work its way up through. Now on Shop FSE, we have these Velcro clips available uh, they're one of my favorite things for dry hair short hair just doesn't uh, create any creases in the hair which I really love and now I'm gonna go in this is the tri razor we've got the 100% cutting side 50% texture side and then a 25% texture side we're gonna use all of that throughout this cut um, but you know it's a, it's a super fun tool to use uh, one of the most creative tools I've used in my hand just because you have so many options and it's like drawing so to start off the fringe, one of the biggest things uh, for me is to not work through this section too fast. So it might seem like I'm just kind of taking my good old time through this. I am, and I'm working that uh, razor about a half an inch up and down at a time. And you can see how that gives me a nice soft line, but it still really follows through and has a purpose. Then what I do is I connect and I draw a short to long line on each side. Now these don't have to be perfect. It's more important to get the up and down of the razor correct. Then you can go in kind of pinch cut a little bit then I go in and I smooth it using my palmitral neuro iron and I add a little bit of bend to it and you're going to notice how um, that softness of the razor just kind of really makes this start to come together so once I get that ironed out then I go through with my scissor and I fine tune the edge so what the razor does for me is it gives me um, a quick response it allows me to cut that fringe fast and then i can go in and just do a little bit of detail work with the scissor if i did this with my scissor i'd have to really focus on elevation uh and then you know i'd spend a lot more time in the salon trying to get this fringe cut so i use the tri razor get a nice uh soft line and then go in and define it using my scissor <laughs> We check the balance on both sides and then when we feel like you know we're ready to move on I let down the sides of the hair I might smooth them out just a little bit before I go into my dry razor cutting and I also sprayed on a shine spray to give it a smoother effect on the cuticle then I go in 100% cutting side up and down movement about six inches wide uh, the more movement you give it the more layered effect you're gonna get in the face frame so it's a very simple um, way to think about it the the more you move, the more movement you're gonna create. So the more I move, the more movement I'll create. Uh, and you can see the texture, the pop, that creates the entire side section uh, for me and just a few kind of back and forth with the razor. So uh, again, super cool tool. I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side and then we'll start working the back. So basically what we've created here, and I'm using now the texturizing side, this is the 50% texture side. Um, so we've created a face frame, and then I go in with just the front teeth 
of the texturizing side because that gives me the most open part of the blade. So you don't just have to take out 50% of the hair. It's just allowing you to have a little bit different cutting surface. So I use the tip of that to go in and remove and create some extra pieces around the face. So you can really just draw it out, uh, which is, you know, a very simple way to go about this. So I just go through there, draw it with the corner of that triangle of the tri razor, and then I've got my finished look there. So now what, what have I done? I've pushed all the weight to the back of the head. And this is something that I want you guys to look at. So after I'm done with the front, when I pulled all that hair forward and cut it, all the weight now remains in the back. So that's what we're gonna go into next after we get done texturizing the side. And we're gonna go in and cut not only the length, um, which is what we're gonna do first, but then we're gonna go in and create a little bit of layering through it as well. So you can see I hold the hair down. I'm gonna go in with the 50% or the 50 texture side. And that, it's not because I wanna cut 50% of the hair, it's because it exposes more blade and I just kinda of keep working that line. So it allows me to cut more hair at once and just glide through the hair a little bit easier. Now it's gonna give me a softer, more broken line as well. It's almost like point cutting your line, um, but doing it much quicker and I just worked my way through. So I chose my length here. If you liked the longer hair, you could keep the hair long as well. You don't even have to do this step, but you can see how soft that line is on the bottom and I'll show you guys. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna finish my line using that uh, Texture 50 side. And then I'm gonna show you guys how to detail that. So it's just the best, like I just love watching how a razor works because uh, you put so much effort into making things look and appear soft with a uh, scissor. But if you do it the opposite and you cut it with a razor first and then define it with a scissor, you just get a very quick and awesome result. So after we finish off that perimeter, we're going to move into the interior part of the back. And what I'm going to do for this is just kind of take out that crown area and clip it away using the Velcro clip so I don't crease the hair. Uh, it allows me to work a little bit quicker through it. Um, so I keep the hair kind of parted over and I do the same thing on the opposite side. And I'm going to start creating depth within this haircut. What I mean by that is if I cut layers underneath the longer layers that live on top, it allows the longer layers that are on top to have a little bit more of a see-through or shadow effect, uh, which can showcase a little bit of movement, even though the layers on the top are gonna be a little bit longer. So I start working in there. Now, where am I gonna start cutting and what tool am I gonna use? I'm gonna be using a texturizing scissor. Uh, this is the Yuragi 6 uh, from Mizutani. We sell that on our website as well. We also have payment plans for our scissors. So if you're in the US or Canada, Canada and you're looking to purchase Mizutani scissors, please go to our website uh, and get them there. But I start working through and you can see I'm working in a diagonal fashion. You can see how easy that uh, texturizing scissor glides through the hair. I'm working that nape area just to create um, that underneath depth. Now, when the longer layers fall over it, um, you'll start to see a little bit more movement throughout the haircut. So you can kind of see how it moves over top of those layers. So now I'm gonna do a little bit of the same thing in the back here, um, just to add a little bit more layering. You don't have to. Again, if you want to keep those top layers longer, you can. Um, the options are really endless, and I never want you guys to think that this is such a literal thing that you have to copy everything that I'm doing. Um, just think about each of these as a technique for you. Uh, so now a little bit of detail work, uh, acro leaf wide, texturizing scissor, through the top fringe section just to soften it. And now I go in with a little bit more of that uh, Awapui Wild Ginger uh, Shine Spray. Uh, it's an aerosol. It makes the hair super shiny. Uh, you, so you can see that kind of straighter version of the haircut. And now I'm gonna show you guys a wavier version, a little bit more of a modern twist to it, leaving those ends out a little bit for a little straighter effect. Um, but you can just really see the pop of the texture through it. So let's finish up the style here and then I'll show you guys the end result. Right, guys so there you go there's the end result i hope you guys like it 
Uh, it's just super fun. I mean, this is like a, a haircut that you could really put on anybody. Obviously, the hair color has a fun twist to it, but imagine if this was a balayaged, beautiful blonde or, uh, you know, a brunette with block coloring and movement and depth. You know, it could be anything, uh, but this haircut would fit it. So, hope you guys like it. Uh, hope you can use it in the salon. Please tag me in any photos that you have. Uh, here's another look at the tri razor. I want to show you guys kind of how how that all works. Pick it up at Shop FSE. Um, find the top of it. You can pop it off. I'll show you guys how the uh, blades work inside. So let's open it up. There's the three blades. You can replace those blades. You can buy those on our site as well. Um, but it's just a super cool tool, guys. And everybody should have this in their kit. So if you don't, go to our website, shopfse.com. Support the channel uh, by buying one. That would be awesome. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what you think. And if you want to win a tri razor, if you made it this far in the video, just say made it in the comments below. I love seeing who actually watches until the end. I'm going to give away a tri razor to one of you lucky uh, subscribers out there. So make sure you type subscribe and I'll pick one of you guys to win one of these for free. If you want to just support free salon education, you want to go buy your own, not wait to win, please go do that. Check out our online store, shopfse.com. Everything you need to know is in the description below. Thank you guys so much for the support. I always appreciate all of you. I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.